In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 facts about Ghostbusters. So, before starting the video please like this video. Do subscribe and turn on the notification to our channel for future updates. 10. Slimer's real name is Onion Head. The fat green ghost who arrives in the hotel hallway and slimes Bill Murray's character Peter Venkman at the beginning of the first film is the most popular and recognizable ghost in the franchise. This ghost character, who only appears in one scene in the movie, has been known to fans as Slimer and has become the Ghostbusters' de facto mascot. The character, however, is never given a name in the film. Due to the fact that the ghost slimes Murray in the film, viewers and the media dubbed it Slimer. The ghost was dubbed Onion Head by the cast and crew on site since it was observed eating from a room service cart and was said to have terrible breath. Slimer was also jokingly referred to on set by actor-slash-writer Dan Aykroyd as the ghost of John Belushi, whose death was still fresh in the cast's minds at the time of filming in 1983. 9. Huey Lewis sued Ray Parker Jr. over Ghostbusters theme song. In 1984, Ray Parker Jr. had a major hit song, his only one, with the Ghostbusters theme tune. Throughout the summer and autumn of 1984, the catchphrase, I ain't afraid of no ghost was heard everywhere. The song, however, was not universally adored. Huey Lewis, a fellow musician and hitmaker, sued Ray Parker Jr. for the Ghostbusters theme, saying that it was too similar to his hit song I Want a New Drug, which had been released the previous year. The litigation was bitter, and it dragged on for 11 years before a settlement was reached in 1995. Although the terms of the settlement were not made public, Ray Parker Jr. later sued Huey Lewis in 2001 when Lewis publicly addressed the litigation. Huey Lewis was contractually compelled, according to Ray Parker Jr., not to mention the litigation in public. 8. A Ghostbusters poem written by Sigourney Weaver has been sold on eBay. Sigourney Weaver penned a poem and read it at the Ghostbusters rap party in Los Angeles after the film's finish. I am a little Ghostbuster slash Sigourney is my name slash this image cost a lot of bread slash hope lets it makes the same, the poem's first line read. Michael C. Gross later sold the handwritten version of Weaver's poem on eBay for $490, along with a promise to reveal all the inside jokes to the winner. 7. To promote the film, a real 1 to 800 number was established. The line who you going to call is repeated throughout the film and even in the theme tune. In the summer of 1984, the film's producers constructed an actual 1 to 800 number for people to call in order to capitalize on the phrase and help promote the film ahead of its premiere. A pre-recorded message from Ghostbusters stars Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd was played on the phone line. While the 1 to 800 phone line was initially thought to be a publicity hoax, it quickly proved incredibly successful, receiving over 1,000 calls per hour for six weeks during the film's run in theaters. The 1 to 800 number was eventually deactivated, and the video depicts a non functioning 555 number. 6. In the film, the phrase I've been slimed is never used. The most famous Ghostbusters tagline is never actually stated in the movie. In 1984, I've been slimed appeared on t shirts and baseball caps all over the country, a reference to the film Ghostbusters. It specifically alluded to the scene in the film where Bill Murray is slimed by the ghost known as Slimer in a hotel hallway. Bill Murray, on the other hand, states in the film, he slimed me. The common term I've been slimed is never used by any character in the film. In the summer of 1984 however, it was that catchphrase that appeared everywhere once the film was released, and it became a legitimate box office hit. 5. The proton packs have changed over the course of two films. The Ghostbusters proton packs, which they wear on their backs and employ to zap ghosts into submission, were never fully developed prior to production and changed during the course of the first two films. In fact, until halfway through the sequel, Ghostbusters 2, the word proton pack is utilized. The proton packs began as simple wands used by the Ghostbusters, akin to the six sticks portrayed in Minority Report. During filming, the backpacks were added by the props department. And the concept that crossing the proton pack streams would result in an explosion was concocted on the fly as the main actors were improvising the movie's climactic scene. Given how closely the proton packs are identified with the Ghostbusters franchise, this is amusing. 4. 
Ivan Reitman, the director, is Zul's voice. One of the most unforgettable aspects of Ghostbusters is the wicked ghost slash spirit Zul's deep and terrifying voice. And, if you're wondering who plays Zul in the film, it's none other than Ivan Reitman, the director. Ivan Reitman was looking for an actor to voice Zul during the film's post-production, but was having problems locating one. Ivan Reitman decided to provide the voice himself due to a lack of time and the impending release of the film. Ivan Reitman delivers the voice of Zul with his greatest baritone, and he does it so brilliantly that the cast and crew were blown away when they watched the final cut of the film. Many people involved in the Ghostbusters production were unaware that the voice was provided by Ivan Reitman. 3. Winston Zedmore was originally cast as Eddie Murphy. When Ghostbusters began filming in 1983, Eddie Murphy was in high demand, and he was cast to play Winston Zedmore, a black Ghostbuster who joins the team midway through the film. Murphy, who has dabbled in sci-fi comedies, see the adventures of Pluto Nash, was enthralled by the script and eager to collaborate with fellow SNL alums Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. Regrettably, Eddie Murphy was contractually obligated to star in another small film, Beverly Hills Cop, which was released in 1984. Eddie Murphy had to drop out of the film due to a scheduling difficulty, and was replaced by actor Ernie Hudson. This squandered chance is made even more regrettable by the fact that the character Winston Zedmore is criticized for having no true personality in the picture and being unfunny as played by Ernie Hudson. Fans are left to speculate what would have happened if Eddie Murphy had been cast in the role. 2. Bill Murray did not profit from the film. Ghostbusters was made on a $30 million budget and grossed approximately $300 million in 1984, which was a huge number at the time. In fact, until Home Alone surpassed it in 1990, Ghostbusters was the highest-grossing comedy in cinema history. Despite the film's success, star Bill Murray did not profit from it, despite it being possibly his most financially successful film. Instead of accepting a compensation for Ghostbusters, Bill Murray bargained with Columbia Pictures to fund his personal pet project, a remake of the film The Razor's Edge, about a World Combat I veteran who seeks meaning in life after being traumatized by war. It was Bill Murray's first dramatic role, and he co-wrote the script for his film adaptation of The Razor's Edge. The Razor's Edge was a critical and commercial flop when it was released in October 1984. It had a $12 million budget, but only made $6 million in theaters. Audiences and critics were not prepared for a serious Bill Murray, especially following his hilarious performance in Ghostbusters earlier that year. 1. The film was originally titled Ghost Smashers and was set in the future. Dan Aykroyd began drafting the screenplay for the film that would become Ghostbusters in 1981 and worked on it for over two years. Ghost Smashers was the original title of the film, and the screenplay was approximately 500 pages lengthy. The original tale was set in the future, and there were multiple Ghostbusters teams battling against each other. The screenplay was too long and confusing for Ivan Reitman, and he despised the title. Harold Ramis, an actor and writer, was then brought in to assist Dan Aykroyd with the script. It was Harold Ramis' idea to make the film into a getting-into-business film, as he put it. The script became considerably leaner after much revising, and the title was changed to Ghostbusters, and the rest, as they say, is history. So, that's it for today's video. What are your thoughts on our video? Please let us know in comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification to our channel before you go. Thank you so much for watching.